Hey guys, Armageddon here today with the Tavor Tar 21. If you guys old, old classic COD players, uh, this thing would have been in that game. You should recognize it. This thing is a semi-automatic bullpup rifle chambered in 5.56 NATO made by these guys. IWI, that stands for Israeli Weapon Industries. This just happens to be their Masada new pistol they, they released recently pretty cool little gun i got to see that at a gun show last fall pretty slick little unit was really impressed with the trigger pull actually on that for a striker fired gun gorgeous trigger but this is about the tavor not the masada so let's keep rolling here so this gun we're going to cover a few different things on it we're going to talk about some of the weapon characteristics first uh just the bullpup kind of the manual of arms uh philosophy of use real quick because i've talked about that at length in other bullpup specific videos we're going to talk about the ergs. We're just going to I'll run through, give you a demonstration of how the ergonomics work, do mag change, things like that. Then we're going to go through the technical specs. Following that, we're going to discuss this thing's use by the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force. We're going to talk a little bit about their use of it, why they developed this rifle. And, uh, and then finally, a few just personal, uh, personal remarks on the gun. Uh, if you want to know about all the accessories, because there's a lot of aftermarket kit and components and stuff on here, I've got another video, Accessorizing Your Tavor, that's going to be dropping tomorrow. So I will talk at length about all those parts in that. I'm going to try and avoid them as much as possible in this video just to keep this streamlined on the Tavor, the TAR-21. For those of you guys that just want to know about the gun, um, know more about it, military origins, how it works, that kind of thing. So we're going to focus on that today. And then, of course, as always, a bonus gun. Uh, which is actually going to lead into the gun of the week next week. So, thanks a ton, guys. Let's jump right in. All right, so, Tavor Tire 21. This thing is a bullpup again, which means the feeding and chamber are behind the trigger group. So, that's all super cool. That does definitely give you a different manual of arms in terms of magazine changes. The weapon's obviously a different layout, and that's just fine. It takes some different training, but there are perks to this system. It is amazingly easy to handle. You can shoulder this here. It's it's gorgeous. Actually, the, the point balance is kind of right above um, right above my thumb here. When, I, when you basically when you grip the firearm, when you grip it, it's basically right there. You can balance this, pick it up by your shoulder, and it's just so pointable. You can hold this and accurately shoot it with one hand, and it's that just makes it really nice. Also, when you're gonna pick it up from you know from the low ready and then just pick it up, it is. I don't think I've ever felt a weapon platform quicker. To, to get ready and get sight picture um, acquired than this gun here, super slick. Also, I'll just prove clear, seeing as we are, seeing as we're playing around with this gun now, chamber is open and, uh, well, let's jump right into the mag change. You're basically just gonna grip the mag like a pistol grip, <laughs> and with your finger here, pull the trigger, which is just the mag release, and then rip it out. Grip it, grip it, that's your mag release. So you can see here, we're nice and clear, and, non-reciprocating charging handle so we'll jump right into the controls now we've got uh, that's really nice so we can pull it back to here and that'll trip the bolt catch let this thing slide home this is a really nice a really nice system again it's a nice little knob that just you know really easy to actuate the way it's forwardly cocked like that it's just easy to get a good solid purchase on it rack it back really dig that um, and then if you want to We'll work back towards the bolt release. The bolt release is the very last thing. Uh, we got our safety selector here. S for safe, R for ready, which I guess was their way of saying fire. Uh, it is on both sides. Although the gun doesn't set up with an ambi, doesn't come with an ambi one from the start. I've added that on, but you can reverse it. So you can take the selector off the um, you know right-handed side position, swap it over to the left if you want. And actually, the whole weapon is really well set up for left-handed shooters we will get to that shortly so then again your mag release there's a couple different ways to do this again as you've probably seen in other videos you can do your traditional grip it rip it uh, method uh this cool cross mag cross industries makes these things by the way if you're in a band state definitely check out cross industries for the 10 plus 10 coupled mags uh the other popular way with the tavors was to just come back here with your with your trigger with your trigger hand and just bump this with your wrist. You can see that already enough to even loosen the mag if it was tilted vertical or even more at an angle, this would have just slipped right out. So that, that obviously works as well. Uh, with the mag in, again, we'll pull the charging handle, get the bolt to 
lock home and uh, this is really neat too. This makes mag changes actually really fast with this gun is when you're you're empty, you know, you do the mag change. Assuming you're replacing a spent mag, your bolt is gonna be to the rear. You just come up with this all in one fluid motion. This is in, hit that with your thumb and uh, boom, hit with your thumb, bolt closes, chamber new round and you're ready to keep going. It's a pretty slick system there. Yeah, that's, that's gonna about cover it for the ergonomics. Let's now move into some of the technical specs and then we will jump into the convertibility for barrels, calibers, and left hand, right hand swapping. So this gun as it stands here again, semi-automatic only model, this is a, the commercial model. Uh, this one is a Canada Special with an 18.5 or 18.6 inch barrel. That's just to avoid RSBL laws here. In the States, they were produced with a 16.5 inch barrel. Again, that was again for maintaining your over 16 inch uh, barrel length and I believe also uh, in some states, your minimum overall length had to still be uh, maintained as well. I believe a lot of the military guns had the, referred to as the C-TARS. This is the TAR-21. There was a C-TAR-21. That thing had a nice, neat little 15.5 inch barrel. So imagine this barrel, lop three inches off of it. It's going to be tucked back into here. Looks gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. A buddy of mine has one of those barrels and I'm super envious. They're super, super rare to come across. Um, but nonetheless, really, really cool. The barrel is cold hammer forged. So really good stuff there. Nice and durable. It's chrome lined as well. So it's going to, it's going to hold up really well for long service life. Also life, also easy to clean. And for the twist rate, it's one in seven. So it's going to handle even your 77 grains, uh, rounds really nice though. With that in mind, this is not a sniper rifle by any stretch of the imagination. And it wasn't designed to be, so that's, that's totally fine. This thing was actually in the late 90s. We're gonna jump a little bit into the uh, the development of this gun now. And late 90s, IWI, or the, the, sorry, the idea of IDF, Israeli Defense Force, they wanted a new modernized system. They wanted to get away from Galils. They wanted to get away from ARs. They wanted something they knew that was super ultra rugged, ultra reliable, super dependable. And they wanted to explore this bullpup platform because they really wanted something that they were finding a lot of their, their fighting was, well, Unfortunately, there's a lot of tension in the Middle East around Israel and, uh, and some of those Arab nations, and they wanted, they, well, they had a lot of street to street, you know, urban warfare, close quarter combat kind of situations. So they wanted a gun that was really easy to get out of, out of vehicles with, and to again, engage in those, that, that, well, those type of engagements, that type of warfare. They came up with this thing in 2001, I believe it was, they ran trials. The IDF ran trials, they ran against, you know, AR-15s or something, well, not the military equivalent, which would be the M4, M16. And this thing just killed it in terms of reliability and durability. Obviously, this thing didn't hold a match to the, uh, the AR-15 in terms of accuracy. You know, good ARs can easily be under two MOA, approaching one MOA, uh, where this is more of a three to four MOA gun. Just for a point of reference, that means if you are shooting at a 12-inch gong, you will be have to be an amazing shot to hit the thing every time at 300 yards or 300 meters rather. Uh, Cause that, that, that means that three, if it's a three to four MOA gun, you're gonna multiply that by three. That means nine to 12 inches diameter is gonna be your, you know, your, your best case scenario pattern at 300 yards. So again, that really brings this gun's range in. Uh, Nine Hole Reviews did a good review on this gun. They talked about it in depth and ran some practical accuracy drills. Seems like they had problems once getting out to, you know, much beyond 300. 300 was still good, but uh, 400, 450 was getting tough. So that was just, you know, th but that's fine. Because again, this gun was developed for a specific purpose. It meets that purpose really well. I mean, your polymer um, receiver, polymer chassis, super durable, easy to clean, doesn't transmit heat, doesn't matter if sand really gets in there. It's an external piston gun as well, which is nice because that, that also keeps debris for fouling from building up in your action. I, in my disassembly video, which was a couple days ago, go look at that thing. I haven't cleaned this thing in, I don't even know how long. It's been at least a couple of years, which is probably bad. And I've shot the gun loads in that amount of time and never cleaned it, not having any problems. And I pulled that gun apart and it even wasn't very dirty. All right, so let's jump into now the caliber conversions and like changing barrels. And then of course, changing this thing over for lefty use. So this gun, pretty admirable for its day. Uh, early 2000s, I mean, the only, for, for being as 
as ergonomically um, and ambidextrously suited as it was, there weren't many guns that predated this, especially bullpups, that took all these things into account. I mean, the, the FN P90 and F2000 were, were good, were great examples. The P90 coming out in 1990. Um, that one being a little bit more simple, as it's just a straight blowback gun. I mean, it's a pistol caliber carb or a pistol caliber cartridge. Uh, the the five seven by twenty eight. So there's less pressure there, less things you're worrying about than you know a hopped up you know five five six NATO round. Um, but I mean the F two thousand did a lot of great things still, still uh, ambidextrously ejecting and and uh, you know controls. But this gun for coming out around the same time, I think does a lot more with being a lot less. The F2000 is a big bulky platform and this this is definitely a little, it's got put on a diet and uh, I think it does a fantastic job. So also I mean, being able to swap out the barrels as easily as it can is really well. Um, I didn't discuss that in my disassembly video because you do have to take off the handguard, this top rail, and then you can, you know, you can slide off. That's actually how you would swap over um, this component because you can run the charging handle and this accessory rail, you can swap those around uh, for left-handed use pretty easily there. Another little component back here to swap around along with, uh, to, to maintain the function of the charging handle. Um, and otherwise, everything is back here for the chamber and the bolt. When you pull again the bolt carrier apart, you just need to know how to get that bolt out. You swap the bolt for a left-hand ready bolt, and then you just swap this, uh, this chamber cover um, over to the other side, and then, then you're basically good to go in terms of running it lefty. And then for caliber conversions, again, when you're at that point, um, there's a little latch here and a little, a little uh, key here, and you basically just rotate it, and that's just the locking lever for your barrel. And then you can just pull your barrel right out, and you can swap a new one in. So again, 300 blackouts, gonna be just your barrel's gonna swap, and then if you're going to nine mil, because you actually made this for nine mil as well, I believe you have a magwell insert, so that it accepts, I think, uh, Uzi, Uzi mags, or it's the, the nine mil um, AR mags. I actually think it's those ones. And and then you're gonna have a different uh, bolt carrier group as well, obviously. Just uh, drop, dropping down to the nine mil, but super cool stuff. Again, this was, I think, I think a fantastic and very modular, very futuristic and, and an innovative platform for when it came out, and again, in the early 2000s. I think just fantastic. So the IDF, I think, really killed this one, really knocked it out of the park. It was, followed by the X95, which again was kind of just trying to address some of the ergonomic things with this gun. I mean, they they swapped the mag release over here. I think they made it look a little bit worse. I think this thing looks just a little more sexy. It's got those, got those curves, but they did add a little bit more modularity with the X95 platform. And again, it's got some pros to it too. Uh, I'll get one of those on the channel here eventually and do some good content on that as well. But uh, nonetheless, really cool stuff. Oh, one more thing I should show you. This particular model with this rail has integrated sights, which are really, really slick. So I'm gonna pop this uh, ACOG off here. And to show you those, you got a nice full pick rail, but check this out. Back here, you got a rear peep, it just pops up. And then up front here, again, just really nice, really easy to pop up. Tritium inserts, as the Israelis are well known for putting in their in their sights, all dating all the way back to uh, the Galils, which, if I have to say, they took that from the, the Finnish Valmont uh, series of rifles, which the Galil was heavily based on. So that those tritium sites really could date all the way back to the Finns, which is which is pretty slick. So, so one cool thing that I encountered, um, I first heard about it from Chris Bartocci, Small Arms uh, Review. <laughs> he explained that as this gun is chambered in 5.56 NATO, which it is, uh, running 2.23 versus 5.56 in it, was supposedly supposed to yield some interesting results in terms of ejection. And I thought that was super interesting. So I wanted to test it out when I was shooting it. I did, and I, I didn't really catch it when I was shooting. Um, and not until I reviewed the footage later. In fact, I kind of thought it wasn't doing it at all, and I kind of just brushed it off as being false, or at least not, not applicable with the ammo that I'm using. Uh, but when I, yeah, when I inspected the footage more closely, I'll, I'll, I'll cut that in here right away. You can see my last, that mag there, I was shooting uh, 5.56 and 223 sequentially. So one round, 223, one round, 5.56, 223, 5.56. When, when I'm shooting, just watch the ejection pattern because I got the camera focused on the ejection port. And you see the 5.56s, they fling out forward about a one or two o'clock position, which is good. Usually that's a good indication that you're, you're, actually your gun is well gassed. And honestly, I didn't think this thing was super overly gassed because the, the brass wasn't just 
flying, you know, hundreds of feet or, you know, even 50 feet. It was just, you know, five to 10 feet in front of me at about a one to two o'clock position. So that's perfect. And when you see the two, two threes, some of them you can't even really see. And some of them you kind of see just bounce and deflect off the back like this, which is what he said would happen. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that is because the 5.56 is a higher pressure cartridge. Uh, and a higher pressure inside the chamber, I mean, that explosion goes off, right? Um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to influence or it's going to uh, encourage that a carrier to open up a little bit quicker uh, just with everything going on. Or when, actually, sorry, when the, when the chamber does open and uh, the bolt begins to release, it's going to be under more pressure and it's going to want to import impart more of that as energy into the carrier which translates into carrier speed, you know, going back and forth. So you've got a reciprocating bolt that's reciprocating that much, or your carrier group is reciprocating faster. It's traveling back towards the rear of the rifle faster. In a lot of platforms, that translates into more perceived recoil. Now, I was really listening, really feeling for that with this gun when I was shooting them side by side. Didn't notice a perceptible difference in recoil, um, but you can see the ejection of the 5.56 versus the 223 differing. I found that super interesting. And it kind of opened my eyes to, to yeah, the differences in 5.56 five, and 2.23 and really how much they can affect a gun when it's, when it's designed to run a certain way. So, again, super cool. Like if this was meant to run on hotter ammo, which it was, again, being slightly overgassed or what, whatever, what have you, that would still ha allow it to run with 2.23, which, again, obviously isn't imparting all that energy into the carrier. So just interesting, interesting stuff. So... I'll leave that at that. We're going to jump into our bonus gun, which is none other than next week's gun of the week. Gun of the week number 37. We have that attributed to the ATRS Modern Hunter. This is a side charging alternative AR-10. Really slick system. Topped off with an LK Inspector DR. Love these things. Um, but this is a great, a great gun and fitted with a black label bipod. This thing is just the the Lamborghini of bipods is, is how I describe that. Anyways, this is a 308 rifle. Modern sporting, super cool deal. And uh, we'll talk more about this next week. Stay tuned for that. Armand Gun out. <laughs>